I drink a lot of coffee and tea. One of the things that I constantly find myself doing is making coffee or tea, drinking maybe half of it, getting caught up in something, forgetting about it, and it inevitably gets cold. And I've gotten into the habit through my college years and into early jobs and where I just would drink cold coffee. <laughs> but I started not liking that. I started really wanting to have different types of coffee and different teas. I, I'd like to keep it warm or be able to at least warm it back up again once I discover that it is at room temperature and is no longer warm nor hot. I started looking at a variety of different things. I came across the ember in a Starbucks that I was just kind of on my way through and saw the ember mug and I had I'd heard of it. I think it was either through a Kickstarter campaign or, or something along those lines. And while it's a cool piece of technology, it never really appealed to me because it was taking a piece of technology, I guess I would say, like this mug uh, that is fired and formed into a ceramic thing, or however the mug is made with various materials, it can last for a very long time. And to suddenly have that be shifted to something that has technology strapped to it or you know battery pack electronics heating elements inside the mug didn't appeal to me because it was now taking something that could last decades or longer and putting it into that class of well how long is this particular thing going to get firmware updates for or is battery degradation after a year or two going to make this thing not be able to keep my drink warm after 20 or 30 minutes or something like that? Or will it just not work at all? Perhaps those, those things do last for quite a long time. But the one thing that kept me away from it was, well, first the price, because they're quite expensive. And secondly, that, they, that you can't put them in the dishwasher. So if you accidentally are putting mugs in the dishwasher and you put that mug in there, you could just damage the thing and it won't work anymore. And they're not going to replace it under warranty unless they have some kind of forgiveness thing that I'm not aware of. Let me know down in the comments if that is the case. After seeing it in the store, and I'm like, I want something simpler and frankly, cheaper. And so what I landed on was this drink warmer. It's a coffee warmer and mug set. You don't have to get it with the mug. You can just get the coffee warmer by itself. It works really well. I've been using it for over a month now. And I guess I'll just walk you through it. What it comes with, how it all works, some of the, the definite positives of it, and some of the things that are kind of drawbacks of the whole design. So this is the Kosori Original CO162-CWM. And what it comes with is, it comes with a coffee warmer, a power adapter, and this particular power adapter is a UL listed one which is nice because I was a little bit concerned when I saw it on the Amazon listing page and thought that the adapter they were showing didn't look like it was actually UL listed, but here it is. And it is definitely a UL listed adapter with the proper markings and e-file number. Anyways, also comes with a user manual. And in this case, this one comes with a coffee mug. The adapter is, is universal voltage, 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 Hertz and its output is 12 volts at two and a half amps. Surprisingly, or perhaps not, the input to the warmer is 12 volts at two and a half amps, and the max power that could be output through the warmer plate is 24 watts. And the temperature range you can set on the plate is between 77 degrees and 230 degrees Fahrenheit, or 25 degrees and 110 degrees Celsius. That does not translate to how warm the liquid will be inside the cup or the mug that you're placing on it, but it is indicative of the temperature of the plate surface. You can kind of get an idea of what temperature it needs to be set to to get the liquid warm to the temperature that you want. Most importantly, this will warm liquids from room temperature. I'll just quickly go through what's inside the box. It's all nice cardboard packaging. There is a user manual. It also comes with a sticker that was on top of the mug, which is indicating that if you stick something metal inside, like a spoon, the <laughs> spoon's gonna get quite hot because it's transferring the heat from the bottom of the mug, which is right above the heating element. So the spoon can get quite hot, even though the surrounding areas don't seem particularly hot. That's something to bear in mind, and it's nice they put that little caution on there. So let's look at the thing, fire it up, and show how it, all of it works. So here it is. Here's the coffee warmer. I usually use it plugged into solar. Uh, I made an adapter that just allows me to plug it into a 12 volt car accessory outlet 
and then plug this into the back of the warmer. The overall efficiency is better than plugging it into the wall. Uh, for details I will get into in a, another video. But if you just plug it in to the wall, you first power it on, it goes through a, there it goes, it goes through like a little power on self-test, or I'm not sure if this is like a factory check to make sure all the segments in the LCD display work. Everything goes white and all the, all the segments illuminate and the Fahrenheit and Celsius also illuminate, and then it just goes into standby. Then you just turn it on by pressing the power button. It shows you its preset temperature, which I have it set to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have a mug here of room temperature coffee now because I've been setting everything up and it's quite cold in here. And so I'm going to just dump this coffee into this mug. This is only about four ounces of coffee. Just put the lid on. For my use case, it's quite often that it's just that like, if I have make a 16 ounce cup of coffee, I have eight ounces or four ounces left. And it's like, I just want to reheat that. And, and, and this works great because it reheats it pretty quickly because it's not a lot of volume of liquid. So how this thing works is that, I'll just take this off for a second while it's heating up. It has a thin film heating element that is below this like Teflon coated surface or sticker, I guess. And the benefit of that is, is that you're not using something that has a low surface to air ratio. I'm just coining this term as I go along. Instead, it's pretty much all a flat surface, very, very thin, very little mass. What it has in here, I think, is that it actually is thermally isolating as much as possible that heating element from anything around it. So most of the heat is being transferred, most of the energy is being transferred into this mug. And because this is a stainless steel mug, that has got a flat surface on the bottom and not a curved domed bottom. So they will work, it will heat up, but something has a flat surface on the bottom like this mug does works much faster. And so it's my preference to use this mug with the little plastic lid on it to help keep the heat in, you reduce the heat loss. And so this will heat up four to eight ounces of liquid within maybe 15 to 20 minutes. It's not gonna be like instantaneous warm up and, and, and you get your hot coffee like you might in a microwave. So if you're looking for that sort of convenience and speed and using the microwave reheat coffee or tea or anything like that is fine with you, then this likely would not be something that you'd be interested in. But I found that reheating things like coffee and tea, even if the microwave is really clean, it still changes the taste. And especially with green tea and other things like that, I don't like putting them through the microwave. So I looked at this, the, the 10 to 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes sometimes, for about four to eight ounces of liquid that's at room temperature, getting it back up to where it's warm to maybe like 130 degrees, 120 to 130 degrees is nice because it's nice and warm again and it's, it's enjoyable to drink. Because I use this mostly on solar, I use it pretty much entirely on solar with the exception of this demo because it's, the outlet is not near me. So I'm not using power off the grid just to reheat my, my drink. The amount of energy being used to reheat that liquid, it's quite small because you're only using about 24 watts continuously until it reaches that, that set point. So this does regulate the temperature. I don't think it's actually a proportional integral derivative controller or a PID controller. If it is, it way undershoots all the time. So as it gets close to like the temperature that you are looking to get to, say in this case, it's getting up to 155 degrees, it will start reducing the power down before it hits that point. I guess to prevent itself from overshooting, but generally it's a small amount of power going into this that the likelihood of you really overshooting is pretty small. So I don't know why they chose to go that route. It is something to be aware of is that as it gets closer to the temperature you set, it kind of slows down and eventually will hit that set point. What I tend to do is just kind of bump it up by a few degrees and takes care of it. <laughs> and you know because again it's not i'm not looking for my coffee to be at exactly 140 degrees i just want it to be warm slash back to being almost hot again and this can get it there maybe what i'll do is a quick demonstration is just back this down to 145 degrees instead of 155 degrees and it blinks a couple times and then it'll lock in that set point and you'll see the power here which has been hanging at about 27 watts within i don't know maybe 30 seconds or so you might start seeing a decrease as the temperature climbs to within five degrees of the set point. 
and now it won't do it. While we're waiting for that to happen, all the buttons on the front are capacitive touch and they seem to be quite responsive. It does beep every time you press the button. There is a way I think in the manual to turn off the beeping and you just press and hold the up and down buttons to go between Fahrenheit and Celsius. The surface of the hot plate can be wiped off. It can get wet. You can't submerge it, but it's nice that you can get the whole top of it cleaned off. You can see now that's getting closer to 145 degrees, which is our set point. And it's backing off off that 27 watts. Now it's down to 22 watts and, and falling. The temperature isn't climbing as quickly anymore. So it's, you're, you're not getting up to that 145 degrees. It's slowly getting there. And I think it, you can kind of see it nudging up a little bit to 24 watts again. I don't know, maybe what's happening in the background is that it has overshot and it's just not updating this display until it gets to that set point. I don't know. It's nice that it regulates so it won't just keep heating up to the point where it's boiling the heck out of your coffee and you can set that. Um, it's also important to note that they do say that with this particular configuration, you can use it to heat up sauces and soups. So I haven't tried it with that yet, but it's kind of an interesting thing. Our, your power goes out and you have canned stuff you want to heat up. You can put it in here. It, it, I would imagine with the, the higher density, it's probably going to take a little longer, but it definitely heats up. The one test that I did was... Uh, can it get the temperature of the water up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the maximum temperature they claim it can go up to? And the answer is yes. And it was from room temperature, and it took it about an hour to get up to that, temp to that temperature. But it did. It will get to the temperature it claims, which is nice, because, you know, there are manufacturers that make claims that they never, the product never even gets close to. The temperature of the hot plate was, pro I think it was at around 180 to 185 degrees or 190 degrees. It was getting quite close to its maximum temperature that I could output. I won't put it in this video, but I will do a couple of follow-up short videos that show various experiments with this, showing it actually working. And I'll link to them in this video once those are up. The only drawbacks I found with this are that a mug isn't technically dishwasher safe, so they recommend you hand wash it for longevity. I haven't yet put it in the dishwasher, but because it's one mug and I don't, I pretty much transfer the liquid into the mug and then put it back into the original mug and then just rinse this thing out and it's good to go, like you would a pot or a pan. I'm kind of, I'm fine with that, but I might test it and put it through our dishwasher at kind of its lower heat setting and see how it turns out. Oh. A couple other things. If you do leave this thing sitting for quite a while and it's on a higher temperature, the top of this mug will get quite warm because it is stainless steel. This whole thing here is stainless steel. You can see steam coming out of here now because it's definitely getting warm. If you grab it and take it and drink out of it, especially when it's, the cup is full, you could burn yourself. So you gotta be careful with this thing and it's either you give it a minute to cool down or I just transfer it into a, a mug. There's some heat loss there, but there's not much, especially when you're just finishing off a smaller amount of coffee or tea or whatever, what have you. The other thing is that you don't need to use this. There are other versions of this that don't come with the mug, and I think they're a little bit cheaper. You can just put the mug on there and heat up your liquids that way. I would cover it with something. And that, yeah, I guess that's it. The only other thing is the beeper is kind of uh, a, little, it's a little loud. The display can be a bit bright. It's a bit dazzling when it's in a darker room but I've kind of gotten used to it. If that's something that you're sensitive to, that this display is quite bright. You probably could put some colored electrical tape over this and it would still easily protrude through that. You'd be able to see it and still interact with all the buttons and things like that. The final thing is that it does do a kind of a weird quirky thing when if you unplug it and it's off, then the power supply isn't quite decisively shut off and you kind of get a chirp, a beeping chirp sound, a little bit of blinking in the standby LED which I found a little bit strange, but I've gotten used to it and it's just kind of something I've like, okay, that's, that's what it does. It's not a sign of a defect or anything like that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a nice device and it seems like it's been designed to last. We'll definitely get more into that when I take it apart. Well, let me just see if I can find anything about the dishwasher. So they say the mug is made with stainless steel and silicone. So I don't know why it can't be put in the dishwasher. I might do a follow-up where I run this thing through the dishwasher maybe once or twice and see if I really get any sort of degradation on it because it's, it'd be a nice thing to periodically run this thing through the dishwasher, just this, the, the cup, the mug, not the whole thing. I'll show just the power supplies, efficiency stuff. It's got pretty decent power factor for a switch mode power supply. It hovers around 0.6, which is higher than quite a few switch mode supplies. So 
again, it's a purely resistive load and it's pretty consistent. So it's probably why it can get to that higher power factor of about 0.6. And you can see that it's dropping off because it's switching around. It's duty cycling that element. And I guess I will end this with uh, taking this because it's pretty close. And I can, yeah, I can tell that it's, it's quite hot. And I will just taste the coffee. Mm-hmm. That is hot coffee. That is back to being hot and it's very good. I love that it warms it slowly because you, you don't lose the, I don't know, if you heat things too quickly, it does something to the flavor. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm just being picky, I don't know. But if you heat it too quickly, especially with tea and coffee as well, it just does something to that flavor. When it's off, the idle power draw is very low, 0, 0.0 watts. But when you do unplug it, uh, those are pretty big capacitors in this supply. And so if I unplug it, it'll, you'll see the light stay on for a while. It's unplugged. And it will do that like kind of chirpy thing. It kind of reminds me of if I take the batteries out of a smoke detector <laughs> and the capacitors are draining and you're replacing the batteries in the smoke detector and it does that like little, I don't know, at least the one that I've got, it'll chirp, it'll do like quiet, like little chirps as the microcontroller is going into reset or something or it's brownout detection or something like that. Or they didn't implement brownout detection and it's trying to restart itself or something. No idea. It does work well, I gotta say. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. Because it's hard to demonstrate that this thing works, in a short video, you know, besides me telling you that it works, I'm gonna put a couple additional videos that show it kind of with some time-lapse stuff because one, I want to, two, it's fun, and three, it helps kind of give a visual of, hey, this is what's going on, this is how this thing works. Look for those if you're looking at this and not sure if you want this thing or if, they, if these things even work. They do. There might be ones that are out there that claim ridiculous things that don't actually work there's always going to be those, but at least this Kasori CO162CWM, I like it. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.